All right, so you sort of get the idea. That was a little rough, but um, part of it was just processing power, which should make sense. So let's take a look, a couple of things, right? So basically identification. So how do you know when you need, you can use, you might want to implement uh, visual programming or grasshopper or parametric design into your process? Well, any data that you're going to be exploring over and over again that you can bring in it can be numbers, it can be um, geometry, um, it can be lists of things. And so really all you need to do is define something that you want to test over and over again very quickly. And then you have to basically design a command string so you can input those parameters and adjust them. So that's the challenge is it's just a different way of thinking. Um, so just to sort of reiterate uh, parametric design, so parametric design, it's, it's a way of thinking that adjusts and enables the parameters and rules to define relationship between design intent and design response. So what does that mean? That just means basically you want to try something and see how it turns out by controlling the input and the parameters and the numbers that go into different command strings that you're making. Um, and you can get, it can get very complex or it can be very simple. Um, so a parameter is a defined input, right? And an algorithm or almost that sort of definition that you set up is the instruction for how to apply that parameter, right? And so that's basically what you're doing is you're just designing systems for applying parameters. You've basically been given them by the programs that you've been using. Um, and again, we'll sort of circle back around here and talk about um, Rhino. Um, and other abstract modeling programs, which are sort of one and done. It's not that it's it's more about creating and then editing that creation over and over again. But if you really want to start over, you really have to start over the process um, of creating it. And so uh, there is sort of a sense of like there is this master craftsman you back there making something, and then if you have to remake it, you make it again. Um, and then once you get to the point that um, that you need to change something that's very difficult or you need to carry something forward um, that someone else has done, it becomes much more difficult. Um, the Sagrada Familia is a good example because where it started, it started very much analog and now in order to finish it, they've gone really comp uh, complementary digital and craftsman. So if you look at the workshop on the bottom, that's the original workshop with the original with some of the original models in it. And then if you look at the workshop on the right, that's the updated version with the 3D printers. And also with the uh, fact that they've begun to construct the entire thing in three dimensions and then use kukas, you know, to go in and cut out the, um, the stone and rough it out. Now they're also using masons and things like that, craftsmen to install it, but they're, um, they're really implementing sort of a new parametric versions of how you can not only envision, create, adjust, and produce. So that's something to think about. Um, and the other thing that I would like you to think about also as well is that you're really simulating a building or a process. You're not just making a one-off thing that we can look at and kind of spin around and think how it might work. You're really simulating a, a process. Um, and to think about that, um, the model represents the system, right? So that's the system itself, whereas the simulation represents the operation of the system over time. So it's a transition from the thing to the process that makes the thing what it is, that tests the thing. Um, and so basically what you're doing is creating an iterative process that can sort of self-learn, you know, from how you, and the limitations are basically what are the parametric inputs that you put into it. So it, again, it doesn't have to be complex, but it is a definitely a different way of thinking. Um, and this finally is, it's a sort of dated example, but it's the Barclays Center. It's one of the first, um, buildings done by shop architects um, that, you know, really leveraged across all scales the sort of idea of parametric design, not only in the representation and development of the design as a visualization and a virtualization of the building, but also down to the design of the factory, down to um, instructing how the trucks to load things up based on scheduling coming out of there. So it really took the idea of data as a base element and just leveraged it across 
across the board from not only the building and the way the building goes together, but the way that it's transported and the way that it's created. Okay, so the um, the next thing I I'm going to talk about is sort of a practical application and um, and take a look at pseudocode and how it translates into actually into Grasshopper um, coding. Um, so I'll stop this and it'll be a sort of part two, which I, 30 minutes is long enough. <laughs>